put on my winter jacket today. That's a weird way to start a video, I know. My uh, my editors here are probably watching the review of this going, what the hell is Gurney talking about? But no, there's a point to this. It's now cold enough in Toronto that I've kind of been on the edge of winter or fall jacket for a while. This morning I said, enough, put on the winter jacket, felt great, no regrets. The reason I bring this up is because we live in a winter country and we are moving into winter here where it's starting to kind of move out of that fall weather more into that single digit temperatures that I'm just not willing to brave anymore when I walk the kids to school. While I was making that choice to put on that winter jacket, overseas uh, in Glasgow, in, in uh, the United Kingdom, there is a meeting of global leaders for the latest World Climate Change Conference. And this follows just after a recent meeting of the G20, uh, a meeting after which Prime Minister Trudeau said he was not satisfied. Um, he said progress had been made, but he he in Canada wanted to see things go further. I, look, you've all seen these conferences before. I don't know if I have anything in particular to, to add to all of the thousands, millions by this point of words that have been written and spoken about them over the years. This is the 26th conference of this kind, and we have yet to solve climate change. So who, who would have thought? What did jump out at me, though, was the interesting timing, because when I was reading about the G20, and again, they came out with some fairly typical statement of, oh, we're going to phase out coal as soon as possible, and we're going to work together to uh, reduce carbon emissions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, while they were coming out with that statement, I was reading some news stories just this weekend from China, where Chinese state authorities have been saying, oh, you know, great news. We have finally dug enough coal out of the ground where we're confident we're going to get through the winter. It's not a story that got, I, I think, nearly as much attention as it should have been getting over the last month or so. But China has had rolling blackout in, uh, in some cities. It's been curt uh, curtailing industrial production because it was worried about having enough fuel on hand to get through the winter. Uh, you've probably noticed yourself the price of uh, gas is, is way up. Oil is way up. There's a global energy crunch right now. I I'm not going to just go full cynicism here and go, ah, it proves the environmentalists wrong. No, I'm, you know what? I mean, I think the environmentalists have some point, and we should probably be listening to them more than we sometimes do. But reality will have its way. One day, we are going to transition away from fossil fuels, and we're going to move on to something cleaner. We should probably work harder to make that a faster transition. But in the meantime, if you don't have enough fossil fuels, people are going to freeze to death. And that's not really an issue we're worried about here in North America. We're relatively affluent. We have a pretty good supply of energy. Uh, you know, natural gas, for instance, um, but in other parts of the world, energy security is a big deal. In China, energy security is a big deal. Our European friends don't necessarily have enough fuel to get through the winter here. I think it is an interesting counterbalance, if nothing else. And look, folks, I support renewable energy. I believe climate change is real. I understand the scale of this, but I also understand the scale of the challenge. If you want to phase out fossil fuels, you need solutions to replace fossil fuel. Uh, in this country, for instance, natural gas. That's the majority of our home heating. You want to get everybody out of um, their gasoline-powered cars and into EVs, we can do that. Let's do the math. How much electricity do we need to replace the gasoline used in small personal family vehicles? How much electricity do we need to replace all the natural gas and home heating oil that's used in Canada? Uh, heating fuel is mm, like kind of like maybe 5% for home heating of ca Canada's total carbon emissions. Still, knock 5% off, off our emissions, that ain't bad. Let's talk seriously about this. Let's do the math. How much electricity is that going to take? How many new transmission lines will we need to carry that electricity? And how are we going to generate it? We can solve all these problems, but we need to start having real talks about them. I'm not really convinced we're having them yet, because frankly, I'm not sure the politicians want to be honest with people about how much it's going to cost to solve some of these problems. Mm -hmm.